If you're a language teacher or a language student and you're interested in how AI can impact on the way that we teach and learn languages, then this is the video for you. I've been a teacher of languages since 1987, but I'm also a language student and I'm on my fourth language. And the interesting thing is the way I'm studying Polish is so different from the way that I'd previously studied French and Spanish. Why? Because of the AI. In this video, I'm going to focus on three key tools. I'm going to focus on tools that first of all deal with pronunciation, and I'm going to show you an amazing technology that is completely free. I'm then going to go on to looking at listening and reading, which is something that I really like to do, to reading Polish, but to listen in Polish at the same time. Again, I'm going to show you free tools that can do that. And then finally, I'm going to finish with vocabulary. Now, another thing, of course, is speaking, and there are brilliant chatbots around, but I'll be dealing with that in a separate video. Really hope you like this video, and if you do, please like it, please share it, please comment on it, and of course, join me on my YouTube channel. Let's get started. This is a brilliant technology. It's called naturalreaders.com, and what you can do with this is you can paste in any text or list of sentences or list of words and hear them being read out in native-like voices. And the voices in English, for example, are superb. Now, the brilliant news about this technology is it's free, so if you click on Get Started and choose Personal, you're gonna come straight into the technology. And in fact, what you can see here on the screen is the words that I'm currently practicing in Polish. So you can literally write in the words that you wanna learn or just paste them in, choose your language. So obviously I've got this set to Polish at the moment, but look how many other languages there are, okay? Absolutely tons of languages covered. And then you just choose your voice. So I'm gonna use Marek, and I'm just gonna give you a quick taster of what this can do. Let's just click on the button a moment and see what happens. So we're gonna click here, and it's gonna to start to read out the sentences for me in a really accurate, native-like voice. Czyli jest to równowartość 76 zł za sztukę. Nastawienie do życia. Lub zniszczone. Now, if that's not interesting in itself, then notice that it also highlights the word as it's talking through the words. It also gives you here the uh, kind of focuses on sentence by sentence. Now, there are some really useful settings. So really useful is that we can click here and turn on and off the, uh, basically the subtitles at the bottom of the state screen. And another thing you can do is click here and slow down the speed a little bit, okay? So if you, you feel it's too fast, you can just slow it down. And I often do that if I want to kind of repeat or really listen carefully to the pronunciation of the words. Let's do an example in English. So I'm going to close that down. So just click here to delete the words. And I'm just going to write in here some words. You can write, write in the words or you can paste in the words. So let me just write in a selection of keywords that I want to practice the pronunciation for. So I've written in some words. I'm going to change the language, of course. So in this case, we're going to do English. Now, there are actually lots of English accents that you can choose from. I'm going to use a UK one and I'm going to choose Sonia's voice. So then I'm going to close that down. And now all I'm going to do is click on this button and hopefully it's going to read out those words for me so I can really practice and listen to the pronunciation of them. Photographer. Photo. Photography. Accommodation. Fragile. Consistent. Expectant. Expectation. So what I've tried to show you there as well as words where the stress shifts from one part of the word to the other, and you can see that it deals with that really, really well. So this is very powerful. Notice I slowed it down slightly as well. Okay, hope you found that first technology useful. And if you did, please like the video because it really helps me and my YouTube channel. Just a couple of things. One problem with that technology is you can't download the audio. So it's great if you've got access to the internet, but if you want to have the actual audio file, there is another similar technology called Love Voice, and I'll put the link to that technology on the screen now. The only thing with Love Voice is it doesn't highlight the words, but it works really well. Now, the other thing is I've in that example there, I've just written the words on their own. Most of the time, I study vocabulary in sentences or in phrases. However, I must admit, sometimes I really just need to practice individual words, particularly in Polish, so I do sometimes list the words. 
Now remember, you could have pasted in a text. And what I'm gonna show you now is how you can actually combine Love Voice with another technology so that we can have some reading material that we can listen and read to at the same time. Let me show you a few ideas. So for this second example, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over and I'm gonna use, for my example here, I'm gonna use Google Gemini, simply because if you have Google, then you have Google Gemini, okay, which has recently been updated. But, okay, so I'm gonna try the Pro 2.5, okay? And of course you could use ChatGPT, you could use Copilot for this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get um, Google Gemini to generate for me a text in Polish about football. So what I can do is I can either write the instructions in or I could actually click on this button here and just talk to Google Gemini. Now you can actually talk to Gemini in various languages. You don't have to speak to it in English, but I'm gonna to speak to it in English, but ask me to do something in Polish. So I'm gonna say, can you produce for me a short text in, in, in Polish, sorry, in the Polish language talking about football. I want uh, to give me some information about how the Polish Football League is organized. I'm a B1 level student of Polish, so can you write for me the text in Polish but at level B1 so that I can understand it? And can you also highlight perhaps 10 of the most difficult words in the text that I might need to study so that I can actually understand the text? So off it goes, and I'm hoping now it's gonna write me a text and it's going to simplify it to be one level. And you can see it's actually doing all of that on the screen now. It's telling me that it's doing it. It's preparing the draft. Now this can be a really good way of working. One thing you can do is actually paste in some words that you want the um, Google Gemini to actually use when it writes the text. But I really like this way of working because it will write a text for me. And as you can see, but what it also does, which I really like, is it gives me a list of key vocabulary. Now, the brilliant thing is about this, obviously one thing is we can copy it. So we can click on here and copy, okay? But what I'm gonna just do for now is I'm gonna grab the text part. So I'm gonna just cl click on this here, part here and select it. Okay, I'm gonna have come down a little bit. Let's get that right. I'm gonna have to go that down to there. I'm gonna control copy that now. Oh, don't forget you can right click and copy. I'm gonna come back to our system, close that down, paste in that text. Now I can actually have that text read out to me. So I'll change the language of course back to Polish. We've got it on English at the moment. Polish is right towards the end. So there it is, click on Polish. Remember you can choose different voices. Let's try Agnieszka. And now I'm in the situation where I can actually read and listen to that text at the same time. Let's give it a try. So let's give it a quick test. I'm going to click on the button here. Cześć! Chcesz wiedzieć, jak działa Polska Liga Piłkarska? To system ligowy. Okay, so absolutely brilliant. Great way of me being able to choose a topic that I'm currently studying and getting the system to write the text at the right level for me on a topic that I'm interested in. So football for me is a particularly interesting topic. Now I have to say, I've read through this text and it really is at about the right level. And I have noticed that these systems are getting better and better at this. One thing, I did make a video about using Google Gemini for making images and using that for teaching in, in the class. So if you're a teacher, you might wanna like watch that video and I'll put that on the screen now. So that's exactly what I do. You can see the power of that because you can get Google Gemini to write your text almost on any topic and then you can listen and read at the same time. I find this really helpful. Hope you're liking the video. Don't forget to like, click on the like button. It really helps me. I'm gonna move on now and look at some amazing things that we can do when it comes to studying vocabulary. Just one thing, lots of people ask me, how do you make your videos, Russell? Well, I use a technology called Camtasia and I do actually have another channel called Screencast Guru where I explain everything about how I built up my YouTube channel using Camtasia and how I make my videos. And if you wanna to subscribe to that, I'll put it on the screen now and you can click on the link and subscribe. I am now gonna focus on studying vocabulary. Now I'm gonna show you a technology that's really misunderstood by a lot of people. 
because they don't realize all the features that are involved in it. And that's Google Translate. And I'm going to show you a few things that you can do in Google Translate that perhaps you don't realize. So the first thing is I'm going to do, just going to show you this in case you don't realize this. Let's say that I wanted to, I didn't understand this uh, phrase here. Okay. Let's say, for example, okay, let's put that phrase in there. I'm going to just copy that phrase. So I can just select it from the text. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to come over to Google Translate. Now I've got it set to Polish. Remember, if you want to change the language and you've got masses of languages, you can do it here. I've got it set to Polish and I want an English translation. Now I'm going to paste that word in. Now, you can argue about whether or not the trans translation is useful, but there are some really useful features within Google Translate itself. The first one is that you can actually save this phrase. So if I click on this button here, then suddenly I've now saved that phrase into my collection, into my word book. Now, where are all those phrases? Where are all those phrases are actually here. So if you click on saved, You'll see, and you can actually see, in fact, I've got too many saved at the moment. I have to organize them all. But you can see here, I've got all the current phrases that I'm learning in Polish. Okay. Now, one nice thing as well about this list is that you can click on it and actually just go through. So I can wake up in the morning and go through the words. Now, I don't normally have that many phrases. And I think the reason that's happened is that the last time I was using the technology, I forgot to clear it. So when you want to clear and start again with a new phrase book, what you want to do is click on this button here and click on clear, clear all. But if I now click, for example, I can listen to the pronunciation and quickly just revise all the key vocabulary that I want to learn. Drought. Okay, in fact, I want it in Polish, of course. Susza. Okay. Że ktoś was może ocenić. Nie, nic się samo nie ułoży. Okay, absolutely super useful. And then, of course, I can just click on this button here and then that will close that down. So just having that ability. Notice also that you can actually listen to the pronunciation of the phrase here as well. Okay, so you can click on and just click on, sorry, this button here and listen to it. Trzy drużyny, które mają najmniej punktów w ekstraklasie. So I find this really useful because of this book. However, there's something else that you can do that's so useful. Watch this. I'm going to click on what I call the magic button. So I'm going to click here on export to Google Sheets. And what this does is it actually opens up all the phrases into a Google Sheet. Now you do need to open up here and open up here to kind of make sure that you can copy the words. Now, I've got way too many words. I would argue that whenever you're doing an activity like this, you should be really working around something like about 10 to 15 phrases max. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna copy about the first 10 phrases. I'm gonna show you a brilliant trick that you can do with a free tool. So I've got the phrases in, Polish and the phrases in English. And then I'm going to come over to Quizlet. Now I haven't got a paid tool in Quizlet. I've got a completely free tool in Quizlet. I'm going to come over to Quizlet and just log into my account. I'm going to click on this button here. And then what I'm going to do is click on create set of flashcards. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to click on import. Remember I've copied all those words and I'm just going to paste them in. And then I'm going to click on import and it it actually makes all the cards for me. Now there's one little thing that you need to do. Just be a little bit careful. When you do this method, Quizlet doesn't always immediately work out what language you're going to use. So just click on the first sentence on, the, on this side and you'll notice now that it's picked up that it's Polish and English. Now what you want to do is click on the button create and now give it a title. So I'm going to call this, for example, vocab March 3rd, okay, click on create, and now you've got yourself a set of cards. Now, I'm gonna close that down, you don't wanna share them, you wanna play them. I'm gonna just show you one final trick. Click on flashcards, let's say you wanna play the flashcards game. What you definitely wanna do when you work with the flashcards is click over on the settings, because one thing you can do in the settings is, I always do the following. I always have Polish at the front and then I try to translate the phrase, but I also come down here and I turn on text to speech because that way I'm going to be able to listen to the voice, but click on advanced text to speech. And what I always do, let me just scroll down and show you is I turn off 
the English because obviously I don't need it in English. That's my kind of native language. So this way, now when I play the games, we're going to get Polish at the front. Okay, um, something like to value something. You can kind of evaluate, value it. Um, so I'm going to click on here and it's going to say, okay, judge it. All right, so it wasn't that too far off. Then the next one. Okay, can't remember what that means, so I better turn, learn it. Okay, nothing will happen by itself. Okay. So Google Translate is super useful. It's got lots of features that I like, and I've done a really nice video that takes that to a much more advanced level. And if you want to watch that video, I'm going to put it on the screen now. I highly recommend that if, if you're a student or a teacher, where I take this Google Translate idea and I take it into more advanced uh, elements. Hope you've liked the video. Remember, if you do, please like it, and thank you very much. Okay, okay, really hope, hope you like the video, the video. And, and if you, you do, please, please come, come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. There's hundreds more videos on the website. There's a really popular section on teaching and using AI. I specialise in, in making videos to help language teachers use technology. If you want to sign up to the newsletter, then that way you can keep up with all the latest videos, the free webinars that we run, the courses that we run, etc. And at the moment, if you sign up to the newsletter, there is a special 14-part free course that you'll be sent. You'll be sent a video about every three or four days that really just focuses on the most popular technologies on my YouTube tab channel that teachers have reacted to. And that really builds up into a really nice course and gives you a strong basis in using technology in language teaching. It's completely free and literally everything that I show you uh, is a free technology. If you'd like to have live training with me, then think about joining me on Patreon. On Patreon, for $6 a month, you get three free videos from me each month without any advertisements in them. But the important thing is those videos are connected to a monthly webinar that we have where we meet live. And we normally work with the technology that we focused on that month, or sometimes it's two technologies. And we do activities and really learn to use those technologies well, so that then you can try those out in class or online with your students. The other interesting thing about joining me on Patreon is that actually you get access to all of the backdated material. So there's over a year of videos and live training this training is very practical with lots and lots of ideas about things that you can do in the class or online with your students teaching languages. So it's much more practical than the YouTube videos and you get that as part of the $6 a month. Okay, I'm going to leave some more videos on the screen that I think you might find useful.